Yo, how's everyone doing? My name is James. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is Griffin GFX, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own logo like backwards. I'm using Photoshop. You can use Illustrator if you prefer. The tutorial shouldn't be too different. Either way, let's get straight into the tutorial. I'm sick with it. I've been ill. Big digits like hill figures. Bigger vision, see the bigger picture. That bitch you with, I will get her. Get high. The five star mill with her. Right, welcome back. So, the first thing to mention is I still have a bit of a cold and therefore I'm a bit tired and my voice doesn't sound the best. So, my apologies. Drop a like for me to get rid of my cold. Yep. First things first. The text is aka posse. This is the font you're going to want to use. It's as close as we can possibly get. If I were to type in backwards, for example, you can see it's pretty damn close. It's not spot on, but you know, like they modify certain parts, and because of the arc, it looks a bit different. But regardless, that's as close as we can get. Let's go, Sploot TV. Um, this is actually going to be for a YouTube channel that I'm starting up. I'll have it on screen as the channel is already made if you guys want to go check it out and like pre-subscribe there's no content yet but it's going to be like music and reaction videos and stuff like that the things that I don't want to put on Griffin GFX basically because I want to keep this purely graphics content from now on I think I don't really know I'm still trying to figure it all out but regardless let's get into how to actually make this so once you have your text typed out you want to left click with the text tool and go to the arc effect which is up here and then you want to select arc you have upper arc and lower arc I'm pretty sure backwards used a completely regular arc like this because it arcs the bottom as well but because that pulls it out so much you can kind of change it by going like that but you don't want to squish it too much so I actually recommend using this one using the upper arc So once we've got that, what I'm going to do, you want to make sure that that both links up, that both links up. How I'm getting these blue lines is by dragging them out from here. If you don't have these rulers, just press Control R, that should bring it up. If not, you're going to have to find it in your window panel. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this layer and hide it so that we always have it as a text layer. But for now, I'm going to rasterize this one. And I'm going to start doing my messing. So the first thing I want to do is bring the S and the T down. Because with the backwards logo, uh, it's all in line at the top, but not at the bottom. So it'll be like that. And like this. Now they didn't do it on the other side, but I think it would be quite a cool addition. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I think I want to make this L bigger. There we go. A quick make do job. I'm going to go over all of this in the pen tool because I want to customize the text slightly. Because like I said before, their text is slightly customized. And therefore, I think it'd be nicer if ours was as well. Let's give a go at dimming it and customizing the text how we want it to be customized. So I'm not sure exactly why I want to change the style slightly, but I almost want to get rid of the way that they've done the sharp flicks. Now this is literally all trial and error. I don't know what's going to look good and what's going to look bad, but we'll just find out. I'm going over the text with a pen tool. I just lowered the opacity on the text layer so that I could kind of use it as a marker to do my own thing. And then when I'm done with it, I'm going to right click, make a selection, press OK and just fill it in with black. What I'm doing here is all down to personal preference. You could keep it exactly as it was, or you could change it loads. This one I'm keeping pretty much the same, to be honest. I just wanted to change the bottom bit a little bit. Right, so down here, I reckon we should like have it kind of wrapping around the um, the O, like in that kind of shape. Okay, might work, it might not, we'll see. 
I've lowered the opacity on this one so I can now once again see what's underneath it because I filled this entire part in with black. I'm going to copy and paste the O that I just made. Pop it there. Okay, so this is my sploot. Parts that I'm unhappy with is the amount of space there is here, and I'm hoping I can fix that just by pulling things a bit closer together. So now it's time to do this outline effect. All right, so what I've done here is, is I found an easy way of working out how thick I need to make the stroke by doing one blob that's the size of the text and then one blob that's the size of the stroke and then we'll apply that to our own. So I'll make this red quickly. So if the text is that thick, oh, if the text is that thick, which looks about right, then the stroke should be this thick. So we're going to get our brush to this size, and we're going to start working in the stroke. But first, let's get the backward color. So I'm going to go blending options, color overlay. And then I'm going to select the backward colour, which is like an unsaturated red. And using the pen tool, we're going to mark out where the stroke's going to go on the layer underneath. Okay, so obviously we have this, but that obviously looks absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, so now what I'm going to do is use that as a guide, make it like that, and then we're going to make the actual stroke a lot thinner. Maybe to about this level. Like that. Right, so let's go again. And boom, we now have a nice shape for our Sploot logo. I almost want to take this bit here down a whole new path because it just doesn't flow nicely. So what I'm going to do is make it like a bit of an electric bolt. Just because why not, eh? So let's rasterize this, let's select the right color. And now I'm just going to make a completely random shape. little zap I quite like that as I've said this is rushed take it slowly let's take the um, the registered sign for the aesthetics that's a little um, trick of the trait of mine if you put a registered sign next to a logo it just automatically looks good Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this almost into a sticker. Just to kind of add to the effect. So I'm going to merge these layers here and I'm going to select the background and the insides of the text. Go to the layer underneath. Go select, modify and expand by let's say four. And I'm going to fill it in with white. Right, now what I'm going to do is delete the other things, make the background red, and then we can present our logo.
All right, so I decided to do a little animation and have the color kind of fading through all the different colors so you get to see what it looks like. Make sure when you're following these tutorials of mine that you use them to like inspire creativity and not just rip brands off. Like with this one, I've ended up going down a whole different direction. Um, but yeah, definitely send me pictures if you guys follow this tutorial and make a backwards logo. I'd love to see them and I'll feature them in another video. Um, and basically guys that is it sorry if I've been a bit under the weather and a bit quiet and stuff next video I'll try and be more upbeat because hopefully I won't be sick anymore love you all if you're not subscribed then press the little red rectangle that says subscribe uh, otherwise I'm going to delete this video in about four minutes so it's basically your decision really <laughs> it's not even funny right love you all have a great rest of your day I'm going back to bed probably <laughs> see you later Get out. Go ahead and watch my heart.